good morning everybody today we will discuss important practice problems in ir spectroscopy okay let us begin with these problems you are given three pairs of stretching frequencies 1865 and 1780 1815 and 70 1750 1775 and 70 1720 and you are given three anhydrides you know each of the anhydrides containing two carbonyl groups two carbonyl groups each of these molecules containing two carbonyl groups because these are anhydrides and hence we know anhydrides give two carbonyl structure you know the first molecule is an acyclic anhydride second molecule is an aromatic anhydride and the third is a cyclic anhydride you know first molecule having no conjugation but the second molecule having extended conjugation because of the presence of two phenyl rings directly attached to the carbonyl group while the third molecule it is a cyclic molecule and also the cyclic molecule having some strain angle strain and hence the co c double bond o frequency usually increases because of the angle strain how do you compare these molecules for the carbonyl stretching frequencies we know the second molecule having extended conjugation the conjugation usually decreases the carbonyl stretching frequency because of the carbon oxygen single bond character acquired by the conjugation so that the conjugated molecules usually having uh, very low or comparatively low uh, lower carbonyl stretching frequency and the strained molecule strained molecule usually by the angle strain molecule the carbon uh, carbonyl stretching frequency usually increases and hence the order of frequencies will be the lowest frequency 1775 and 1720 for carbonyl stretching will be for this molecule the molecule second because it has an extended conjugation and the highest stretching frequencies 1865 and 1780 that will be for the third molecule because it uh, it is a cyclic and the strained molecule because this molecule having angle strain okay and the acyclic molecule which having the normal carbonyl stretch for anhydride 1815 and 1750 cm inverse okay then see the next example how do you distinguish between these isomers one is ethanol and the other is an ether you know ethanol having oh Uh, stretching it is a strong and broad band it will give a strong and broad band at about uh, 3300 cm inverse and 3400 cm inverse or in between 3200 to 3400 cm inverse and such a broad band will not be given by the either either having only Uh, sing, uh, c single bond or single bond c stretching co stretching of c single bond or single bond c that is that will give uh, usually this frequency uh, will be in the uh, uh, fingerprint region that is around 1000 to 1100 cm inverse that is why we can distinguish between ethanol and uh, either ethanol give a broad and as a strong and broad peak in between 3200 to 3400 cm inverse 3400 cm inverse a strong and broad band such a, a strong and broad band will not be given by either either gives only the uh, uh, a medium intensity band at uh, or in between 1000 to 100 or uh, 1100 cm inverse okay that is how uh, the alcohol and either 
can be distinguished. That is either uh, alcohol usually gives uh, this uh, a broad and a strong band for oil to stretch for oil to stretch in between 3300 to 3400 cm. And a carbon oxygen stretch, carbon oxygen stretch, carbon and oxygen stretch uh, at uh, uh, 1050 cm. Whereas this either C single bond or single bond C stretch usually appeared in between 1300 to 1050 cm. Uh, usually two CO stretching uh, uh, will be appeared, one for symmetric stretching and other for asymmetric stretching in this region 1300 to 1050 cm inverse okay and uh, then you can see this molecule how, how will you distinguish between these two molecules both are cyclic ketones cyclic ketones and uh, it is a six membered cyclic ketone usually six membered cyclic ketone uh, in the case of six membered cyclic ketone the carbonic stretching frequency is uh, about same as that of uh, acyclic ketone uh, that is around 1715 cm inverse but it is a strained molecule it is cyclobutanone a strained molecule it will have greater frequency than this cyclohexanone that is how cyclohexanone and cyclobutanone can be distinguished cyclohexanone having greater CO frequency, C double bond of frequency than cyclohexanone. Okay. Angle strain increases the C double bond of stretch in cyclobutanone compared to cyclohexanone. Thus, one is having more stretching frequency than two. Then see the these two examples. See these two examples. One is salicylic acid, orthohydroxybenzoic acid. Other is para hydroxybenzoic acid. How will you distinguish ortho hydroxybenzoic acid and para hydroxybenzoic acid each other? You know, ortho hydroxybenzoic acid or salicylic acid having uh, in, intramolecular hydrogen bonding, intramolecular hydrogen bonding, intramolecular hydrogen bonding between hydrogen and oxygen, hydrogen of carboxylic acid and, and oxygen of OH group or vice versa and so we can say orthohydroxybenzoic acid or salicylic acid having uh, intramolecular hydrogen bonding. This para hydroxybenzoic acid having intermolecular hydrogen bonding, intermolecular hydrogen bonding. You know the OH stretch for molecules having intermolecular hydrogen bonding is usually greater than that for in molecules having intramolecular hydrogen bonding and so the second molecule having greater OH stretch than the first molecule and that is how this can be distinguished. The intramolecular hydrogen bonding in one is lesser vibrational frequency than the second which having intermolecular hydrogen bonding. This molecule having intramolecular hydrogen bonding and hence it has uh, greater frequency or oh, stretching frequency than or compared to the uh, salicylic acid which having uh, intramolecular hydrogen bonding. Okay, that is how these two molecules can be uh, distinguished. Then see these molecules. These are cyclic ketones, uh, lactone, uh, cyclic esters, cyclic esters. See uh, this molecule, first molecule. Uh, having this oxygen containing a lone pair of electron this can be contributed for the lock delocalization delocalization while this molecule also having this oxygen containing a lone pair of electron this also for uh, also contribute for the delocalization Here there is a, a pi bond. This also contribute for delocalization. And hence conjugation 
on either side of this carbonyl group and in this case this oxygen contribute its lone pair of electron for delocalization as in the previous case but this lone pair of electron also may be shifted to towards this pi bonding pi bond or pi bond for the delocalization and else only 50 percentage contribution of delocalization is obtained for this molecule carbonyl for this carbonyl group in this molecule but here in both the sides maximum percentage of contribution for the delocalization or conjugation here in uh, from uh, there is no double bond and hence only from this oxygen then you know as the conjugation increases carbonyl stretching frequency gets decreases and so the second molecule will have least amount of carbonyl stretching then comes the first molecule then comes the uh, third molecule or uh, this third molecule will have the maximum carbonyl stretch carbonyl stretch and this second molecule will have minimum carbonyl stretch and this first molecule will have carbonyl stretch in between these two molecules okay that is third is greater than first which is which in turn greater than second second is the least to carbonyl stretch in, uh, molecules with the least to carbonyl stretch and third is the uh, uh, molecule with the maximum carbonyl stretch okay then see these examples how do you distinguish between these three molecules one is acetophenone it is acetophenone it is para nitroacetophenone it is para amino acetophenone see the difference the nitro group is electron withdrawing group and NH2 group is electron donating group usually electron donating group decreases the carbonyl stretching by the conjugation while the electron donating group usually increases the carbonyl stretching frequency of the molecule and hence we can distinguish these three molecules the uh, second molecule will have maximum carbonyl stretching because of the presence of electron withdrawing group and the third molecule will be having uh, least amount of carbonyl stretching because of the presence of amino group that is electron donating group and so the um, so these molecules can be distinguished by these factors uh, para nitro acetophenone having least amount of carbonyl stretching and para amino acetophenone will be having maximum amount of carbonyl stretching and uh, this acetophenone having in uh, carbonyl stretch in between these two molecules okay that is electron withdrawing group at the para position increases the C double bond over stretching frequency in 2 that is uh, similarly electron donating group at the para position decreases carbonyl stretching frequency in 3 ok then see these molecules it is acetophenone it is orthomethyl acetophenone how do you distinguish bet between these three uh, between these two molecules you know this methyl group methyl group induce a steric hindrance to carbonyl group and hence carbonyl group is forced to lie in a separate plane or kick out of the plane of benzene and hence the carbonyl stretching frequency gets increases because of the steric hindrance of methyl group with the carbonyl group of acetophenone thereby the C double bond O group the CO group is forced to kick out of the plane of this benzene ring and hence the C double bond O stretching frequency gets increases 
there is no such a methyl group on the uh, ring in this molecule acetophenone. So, ortho methyl acetophenone having greater C double bond or stretching frequency than acetophenone itself. That is how acetophenone and ortho methyl acetophenone can be distinguished. The steric hindrance of bulky methyl group in ortho position forces the C double bond O group to lie out of plane that will increase the C double bond O stretch in the molecule second. That is how these molecules can be distinguished each other. Then see these molecules. How do you distinguish para amino acetophenone? It is para amino acetophenone, para amino acetophenone from acetanilate. Para amino acetophenone from acetanilate. See this molecule, para amino group, this amino group will give strong doublets or two peaks in between 3200 cm inverse to 3400 cm inverse a strong uh, doublet that is two peaks in between 3200 to 3400 cm inverse in the case of paramino acetophenone but in this case acetanilate this NH group gives multiplets uh, only uh, single multiplex, single multiplex in this region. Okay, that is how this can be distinguished. That is, para amino acetophenone gives two peaks in between 2000, uh, I mean 3200 to 3400 centimeter. It will be strong and uh, appeared as a doublet. Okay, two peaks in between 3200 to 3000. Uh, 400. While this acetanilate gives a multiplet in this region. Multiplet in this region. A single multiplet. Okay. There is para amino acetophenone. Two NH stretching between this region. That is around 3300 to 3500. This region. Okay. And uh, uh, in this case acetanilate. It, which give multiple NH stretch uh, in between 3300 to 3120. Sorry, it is the region of multiple 3300 to 3120 cm inverse. Multiple type Multiple. Multiple type. That is why we have double type. Random peak In the case of para amino acetophenone okay see these molecules one is cystilbene and the other is transtilbene how do you distinguish this cystilbene and transtilbene see transtilbene having this c double bond c it is symmetrical molecule this molecule is symmetrical symmetrical and so c double bond c C double bond C, C double bond C stretch is not, uh, will not appear. C double bond C will not, uh, stretch will not be appear in the uh, IR spectrum of trans still be. While this molecule, in this molecule, this carbon carbon double bond stretch will be appeared at uh, uh, approximately at 1600 centimeter inverse. Okay, that is how we can distinguish cystilbene and trans uh, trans Cystilbene or the carbon carbon double bond centimeter inverse in that site or a strong peak in the other way trans carbon carbon double bond symmetrical and Carbon carbon double bond symmetrical as one to the net, other other polarity other polarity change in Dawilla, other one to the net, other IR inactive vehicle, C double bond C, other one to trans still be C double bond C at a stretching frequency the Muku Kitanilla. That is how these molecules can be distinguished. Okay, then uh, see this molecule, malic acid and 
fumaric acid. How do you distinguish malic acid from fumaric acid? It is fumaric acid, it is malic acid. Malic acid having C, both the COOH group on the same side and uh, in this case the CO group, COOH group is on the opposite side of carbon carbon double bond. The C double bond or stretching uh, in the malic acid will be uh, greater than uh, that for fumaric acid because of this steric hindrance of COH group. This COH group is adjacent to this COH group and so the C double bond or stretch in this malic acid will be greater than that of that for fumaric acid because of the COH group, bulky COH group adjacent to this COH group. Okay. COH stretch in malic acid is greater than fumaric acid because of the steric hindrance and hence less conjugation, less conjugation. I COH group in the presence, the presence of the malic acid in the C double bond O group in the conjugation or because of the steric hindrance. At the same time, the COH group and the opposite sides C double bond O conjugation, E double bond, double bond in the conjugation. Conjugation. Uh, malic acid, fumaric acid in uh, the same way, the same way, the random adhthar thullu and the steric hindrance on the conjugation in the same way. Conjugation in the same way, the malic acid the maximum conjugation now. That is why the conjugation is in the same way, so why it is C-double bond oil is stretching? Kudu. That is how we can, differ, uh, dif, uh, we can distinguish malic acid from fumaric acid. Okay? Then see this molecule, it is halo, axial haloketone, cyclo, it is uh, chlorocyclohexanone, it is axial chlorocyclohexanone, 2 chlorocyclohexanone, it is also 2 chlorocyclohexanone, but it is equatorial chlorine. Here, chlorine is in the equatorial position, this here, chlorine is in the axial position. Axial position now, C double bond O group. CL group on the mill paramava the agalatiran and down. That is why there is no interaction between C double bond O and the CL group because they are uh, they, uh, laying as far as apart as possible. If the equatorial position lamb, CL group, um, other the chloro group, um, C double bond O group, um, and so there is steric interaction. Other one to the net equatorial chloro cyclohexan or paramava the C double bond O structure down, would a coravide. Shall it? And so, C double bond or stretching frequency in equatorial chlorocyclohexanone is greater than that for axial chlorocyclohexanone. Okay. Steric hindrance of chlorine on C double bond O at the equatorial position increases the carbonyl stretch. Okay. Then see these molecules. These are all amides. Amides. It is having uh, it is a four membered amide cyclic amide it is six membered it is seven membered you know as the ring strain increases correspondingly the c double bond or stretch also increases so the first molecule will have maximum c double bond or stretch and then comes the second molecule and the least will be of third molecule okay because of the angle strain. Then see these molecules. This is also very important. This is phenol. This is second position, sixth position, tertiary butyl group. This is orthohydroxy acetophenone. Orthohydroxy acetophenone. This is OH structure. How do you distinguish between these three molecules? That is phenol 2,6 di-tertiary butyl phenol, then uh, orthohydroxy acetophenol. Now, we have two bulky group, methyl uh, ortho position, and bulky tertiary butyl group present at the ortho position. That is the one OH group. Uh, the uh, molecule white hydrogen bond to form G and very a prior group because of the presence of this 
ബൾക്കി ടെർഷറി ബ്യൂട്ടി ഗ്രൂപ്പ് അതുകൊണ്ട് തന്നെ ഈ ഫിനോളിലുള്ള ഓച്ച് ഗ്രൂപ്പ് ഫ്രീ ആയിരിക്കും ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ഫ്രീ ഓച്ച് ഗ്രൂപ്പ് ദീസ് ഓച്ച് ഗ്രൂപ്പ് ഈസ് ഫ്രീ ഓച്ച് ഗ്രൂപ്പ് നമുക്കറിയാം ഫ്രീ ഓച്ച് ഗ്രൂപ്പ് ഉള്ള ഫിനോളിലാണെങ്കിൽ മാക്സിമം സ്ട്രച്ച് ഓച്ച് സ്ട്രച്ച് ഉണ്ടാവും അറ്റ് അറൗണ്ട് ത്രീ തൗസൻഡ് സിക്സ് ഹൺഡ്രഡ് സെൻറ്റിമീറ്റർ ഇൻവേഴ്സ് ഫോർ ഫ്രീ ഓച്ച് ഗ്രൂപ്പ് എ ബ്രോഡ് ആൻഡ് സ്ട്രോങ് ബാൻഡ് നിയർ ത്രീ തൗസൻഡ് സിക്സ് ഹൺഡ്രഡ് സെൻറ്റിമീറ്റർ ഇൻവേഴ്സ് ഈസ് ഒപ്റ്റൈൻ ഫോർ ഫിനോൾ ഹാവിങ് ഫ്രീ ഓച്ച് ഗ്രൂപ്പ് ഓക്കെ ഇവിടെയാണെങ്കിൽ ഈ മൂന്നാമത്തെ മോളിക്കൂളിൽ ഇൻട്രാ മോളിക്കുലർ ഹൈഡ്രജൻ ബോണ്ട് ഉണ്ടാവും ഈ ഓക്സിജനും ഹൈഡ്രജനും തമ്മിൽ ഇൻട്രാ മോളിക്കുലർ ഹൈഡ്രജൻ ബോണ്ട് ഉണ്ടാവും ഇവിടെയാണെങ്കിൽ ഫിനോളിലാണെങ്കിൽ ഇൻറ്റർ മോളിക്കുലർ ഹൈഡ്രജൻ ബോണ്ട് ഉണ്ടാവും ഫിനോളിൽ ഇൻറ്റർ മോളിക്കുലർ ഹൈഡ്രജൻ ബോണ്ട് ഇവിടെ ഇൻട്രാ മോളിക്കുലർ ഹൈഡ്രജൻ ബോണ്ട് ഇത് ഫ്രീ അപ്പോൾ ഇതിനാണ് മാക്സിമം ഉണ്ടാവുക പിന്നെ വരുന്നു ഇൻറ്റർ മോളിക്കുലറിന് ലീസ്റ്റ് ആയിരിക്കും ഇൻട്രാ മോളിക്കുലറിന് അതുകൊണ്ട് മാക്സിമം ഫ്രീക്വൻസി ഓഫ് ഓച്ച് സ്ട്രച്ചിങ് ഉണ്ടാവുക സെക്കൻഡിനാണ് പിന്നെ വരുന്നു ഫിനോൾ ദെൻ ലീസ്റ്റ് ഫ്രീക്വൻസി ഓഫ് ഓച്ച് സ്ട്രച്ചിങ് തേർഡിനായിരിക്കും അപ്പോൾ സോ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് സെക്കൻഡ് ഇസ് മാക്സിമം ദെൻ കംസ് ദ ഫേസ്റ്റ് ആൻഡ് ദെൻ കംസ് തേർഡ് ഹിയർ ദ ഓച്ച് ഗ്രൂപ്പ് ഇസ് ഫ്രീ ഓച്ച് ഗ്രൂപ്പ് ഹിയർ ഇൻറ്റർ മോളിക്കുലർ ഹൈഡ്രജൻ ബോണ്ടിങ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ഇൻട്രാ മോളിക്കുലർ ഹൈഡ്രജൻ ബോണ്ടിങ് ആൻഡ് സോ ദ ഓച്ച് ഫ്രീക്വൻസി ഈസ് Uh, decreasing in this order okay then which of the following molecules best suits for this ir spectrum how can you identify uh, a molecule which best suits this ir spectrum see by examining this ir spectra you can see a carbonyl stretch c double bond or stretch near 1700 cm inverse that indicates the molecule will have a c double bond o group or carbonyl group and then you can see an oh broad band oh broad band strong and broad band in between 2700 to 3300 cm inverse a wide broad band in between 2700 to 3000 cm inverse and combining these two the c double bond o group and the oh group we can say the molecule will have carboxylic acid group c double bond o single bond oh that is carboxylic functional group may be present and hence we can rule out the possibility for these two molecules these are aldehyde and ketone the b is aldehyde and the c is ketone and so we reject these two possibilities the possibilities of these two molecules okay because uh, the molecule containing a carboxylic functional group because the graph uh, ir spectra shows a carbonyl stretch near 1700 cm inverse and a strong and broad band in between 2700 to 3000 cm inverse okay now we will have this carboxylic acid and this carboxylic acid a and d d is an unsaturated carboxylic acid and a is a saturated carboxylic acid okay which one of these two best suits this ir spectra see there is no carbon carbon triple bond stretch at 2200 cm inverse if the d is our uh, carboxylic acid Uh, there should be a carbon carbon triple bond signal a carbon carbon triple bond stretch near 2200 cm inverse but here there is no carbon carbon triple bond stretch no carbon carbon triple bond stretch near 2200 cm inverse this reject the possibility for a compound d and hence the uh, answer would be a okay answer would be a then see this uh, graph ir ir spectra which of the following compound a b c and d best suits this ir spectra a is a, a ketone b is an aldehyde c is also uh, also an aldehyde hydroxy aldehyde and d is a ketone ketone which of these compounds 
best suit this IR spectra. See, the IR spectra shows a carbon, a strong carbon stretch near 1,700 cm inverse. Also, you know, a, a carbon hydrogen stretch near 2,750 cm inverse. It is the Fermi resonance of an aldehyde group because it is containing a carbonyl group and also uh, a strong, uh, I mean, a, a weak band because of the Fermi resonance of carbon hydrogen aldehydic stretch that is 2750 at 2, 2750 cm inverse that indicates the molecule is an aldehyde. See uh, carbon hydrogen sp3 stretch near 2900 cm inverse and so it is a, uh, this containing carbon hydrogen or CH2 or an al alkyl group because of this carbon hydrogen stretch. This rejects the possibility for ketones because it is an aldehyde. The graph indicates or IR spectra indicates it is an aldehyde. So it rejects the possibility of compound A and compound D. Now you can see both this B and C are aldehyde. Aldehyde. Which one of these best suits the IR spectra? The given IR spectra. Now we can examine. See if the C is the answer. There, the, uh, in the compound C, you can see there is an OH group, OH group, and hence we should get a broad OH signal in between 2300 to, uh, I mean 3200 to uh, 3300 to 3600 centimeter inverse, but there is no broad OH signal here, and this rejects the possibility for the compound C. Okay. And there you can see there is a carbon-carbon double bond stretch, carbon-carbon double bond stretch and uh, this may be this double bond in the compound B and so uh, you can see there is a carbon-hydrogen double bond carbon-hydrogen or sp2 stretch near 3100. All this indicates the actual molecule will be B or the molecule B best source this IR spectra. Answer is B. Okay. Then see this example also. Which of these molecules A, B, C and D best suit for this IR spectra? Here it is an amine. It is also an amine. It is uh, uh, a secondary amine. Secondary amine. It is aniline. Primary amine. A, B and D are primary amine and C is secondary amine. Then which of these molecules best suit this IR spectra? See here the NH2 stretch to NH2 band in between 3300 cm inverse to 3500 cm inverse. Two bands that rejects the possibility for the molecule C. Okay. Then C carbon nitrogen stretch carbon nitrogen stretch the remaining molecules all have carbon nitrogen bond and hence there is carbon nitrogen stretch then you can see carbon carbon double bond stretch this may be due to the uh, vinylic carbon carbon double bond stretch or uh, aromatic carbon carbon double bond stretch here it is aromatic carbon carbon double bond stretch also you can see uh, a double bond carbon hydrogen near uh, 3100 centimeter inverse that is aromatic carbon hydrogen stretch sp2 stretch aromatic carbon hydrogen sp2 stretch that rejects the possibility for compound b then remind the compound a and the compound d it is aniline it is uh, benzyl amine benzyl amine see there is no carbon hydrogen stretch near 2900 cm inverse it is benzyl amine so there is a ch2 group which uh, uh, this CH2 group, if there is CH2, uh, if the IR spectra is uh, for this molecule, there should have a carbon hydrogen sp3 stretch near 2900 cm inverse, but there is no carbon hydrogen sp3 stretch near 2900 cm inverse. This rejects the possibility for this molecule. Okay, and so the answer would be aniline, the compound D. Okay. Okay, here I conclude this session.
Thank you for listening. Thank you.